thank you for attending our third webinar in a series of webinars by the Chamber under the theme Supporting Businesses in a Time of Crisis. Uh, my name is uh, Will Pano. I'm the Chief Executive of the Chamber, and I'm, I'm, I have Sharon, um, who is on our call, as well as Nina from the Chamber office, as well as many several representatives from the Cayman Islands Center for Business Development. So this, this seminar is being held in partnership with them. Um, they are the agencies responsible for implementing government's recently announced relief measures for micro and small businesses affected by COVID. Uh, the purpose of this meeting is to provide you with information about the various resources available by them as part of this assistance package and to respond to any questions you may have. We're certainly grateful for Althea and Thais and the team there for hosting this webinar for us. So right now I'm gonna introduce their team. Um, it's Althea West Myers, she's the director of the Center for Business Development and she'll be our main presenter today. Althea was, has worked in business development across the region for the last 13 years at the policy and operational level. She has a passion for entrepreneurship and strategy design and is committed to the task of increasing social and economic value for micro and small businesses in the Cayman Islands. Other members of the, the Center for Business Development team are Thais Dusant, she's a senior business advisor, Antoline Williams, she's a business advisor, and Marlon Hunter, who's a financial administrator. So just before I turn over to Althea, let me remind you that you can submit your questions during this presentation via the chat feature. There will also be a question and answer segment at the end of the presentations, um, but both, uh, both the Thais and myself, she as the co-host and I as the host, will allow, will open your mics so that you can answer, ask your questions if they're not already answered through the chats. The team from the Business Development Center will go ahead and respond to your questions in the chats as we go. So at this time, as I said, please, please turn off your mics so that it, there's no feedback on the recording. And again, on behalf of the chain, yeah, she can. please turn off your mics, please. So we're going to, I'm going to turn it over to Altia for the formal presentation. And again, thank you. Thank you, Will. All right, let me just say thanks, first of all, to the Chamber for the opportunity that they have given to the Centre to be able to meet and actually present ourselves to the Centre. We've not had that chance since we've been open. We have been in operation since October, but we've been open to the public since the 23rd of March. Open with a different agenda um, from what we had originally anticipated. Um, COVID-19 has thrown us all into a tailspin almost, but um, luckily this center was on the road to setting up. So we are more or less ready. We were ready to handle what has come. Oh, the government has more or less thrown us into the mix by ensuring that what has been announced is gonna pass through the center first. But before I get into what that entails, Harry, I'm, gonna, I I'm gonna speak um, to the team, just to kind of introduce them so that um, you can be aware of us. First of all, the team currently has, there are four, four of us who are employed within the center, but since um, the inf influx of interest or since the government's announcements, we've had eight other persons redeployed to the center. So currently there are 12 of us um, handling your queries and, and that kind of thing just now. So I'm gonna ask them to introduce themselves as just to say hi, people can know who they're speaking with. Um, at least the four, four other, the three other persons. Hi, I'm Thais Dusant. I'm a senior business advisor at the center. And Thais is the director designate as well. Hi, I'm Anthony Williams and I'm a business advisor at the center. Marlon. Hi, my name is Marlon Hunter. I'm a financial administrator with the Ministry of Commerce, Planning and Infrastructure. I've been redeployed to assist with the center's efforts during this COVID-19 crisis. All right. 
thank you team that's what, what i call the a team they've been doing a fabulous job um keeping us on track handling all of the inquiries and just ensuring that we are not even though that might, might appear that we are inundated but we are ensuring that we are handling everything that is coming to us all right i'm going to start with a presentation so i'm going to share my screen and we're going to present first of all i'm assuming for about 20 25 minutes i will present thereafter um we're going to open for questions and question and answers so for the for the first 20 or 25 minutes i'm just going to present and then you will have a chance to ask your questions the questions will be fielded by the entire team the four of us will answer your questions um so i'm and i'm hoping that with the presentation it will give you more answers than questions <laughs> um so that yeah you may not need to ask a lot of things that are on your mind but let, let's see if i can make this happen in terms of present presentation uh, i think i came out too quickly I'm not very good at this. I'm still learning my way around. All right, so trying to minimize this. All right, so um, here goes. As it, as it relates to the presentation outline, so I'm going to start by talking about the our center, uh, what it was originally intended to do. Um, I'm going to talk as well, and, and I'm sure most persons are interested in the the government's relief measures. So we're going to speak about that and we're going to talk also about the relationship in terms as well we are looking at the roles and relationships that um, between ourselves and the the development bank because as you will know the development bank will have a, a major part to play in the um you know dissemination of loan amounts and that kind of thing all right so the overarching goal of the center is to Improve and improve and prove the economic value of small businesses in the Cayman Islands, um, and that goes without saying. Um, it is said all over the world that small businesses are the the, the engine of economic growth. Okay. What we're trying to do is to ensure that that we can we can prove that in the first instance, and where where there is need for improvement, we will ensure that that happens. What we have found, what I have found in my years of working with small businesses is that quite a number of, especially micro business operators are good um, technically. So they are good artisans, they are good. But in terms of developing the structures that, that should support that, 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 that ability, that's where it's lacking. And so they may have a good product, but they don't, they don't have a, a, a good market. They may have a good product, but they don't have the structures that are required to, to facilitate the development of that product and get it, get it where it ought to go. So that's what we, we oh, sure. exist to do, to help with that. And then thereafter to prove the economic value, because it's one thing to speak of it. Not many countries are able to speak to the contribution of small businesses to their country. And that's what we are intending to do. All right, as it relates now to the operational structure. So as, I, as indicated before, I'm the director and I preside over two elements of the, of the center. The one that you that you will have to deal with now is the non-residential business development service section of it, but and that's what, that that's where we are fully operational now. But also we will have a residential incubator. The space is now existent and it's more more or less ready. Within we had originally intended to open the space at the beginning of June, but with what's happening now, we will definitely have to push that back. But when, when that happens, we will have, a, we have space for 12 small businesses, owners, small startups or existing businesses to operate from rent-free, but with obligations, you know, um, for a minimum of two years each time. So that's what that space will, and that space will be manned by a program coordinator. But let me just speak to what GAP the center is, um, will attempt to fill for the next few years. So we will help small business in terms of their management decision making and their governance and structures and their strategic skills. I just spoke to that a while ago. Small businesses and more so micro businesses are technically skilled, but they lack the, the, the wherewithal in most instances to, to manage, to, to design structure, to, to put the input 
governance structures into those businesses. Some of them, some small business owners as well, lack financial literacy, or if they have, they may lack the time to, to, to manage their finances properly. So our intention is to help with that as well, to, pro to improve market access as well, to improve access to funding. To improve access to funding and to help with disaster, disaster and risk management as we are um, doing currently. That, but this is on the, on the side of the businesses. As it relates to how we will assist on the government side, we intend more or less to over long term to articulate a MSME stimulus package. This is not what this is, but over time we intend to articulate and advocate for us an MSME stimulus package. We intend to collect and collate specific industry data. One of the things that is critical for Cayman now is the diversification of the economy. And so we want to look at where else it is that we can, what other industries can be built to create economic inclusion and thereafter economic diversification. So that's one of the things we'll be really zeroing in, zeroing in on in terms of developing other industries. And we want to feed this data to the government to stimulate new industries. We want also, we plan also to start an internship program with the university and to provide government with research that is critical to stimulating the sector. Now we operate on three, part, three pillars. Uh, obviously, um, what you will see all the time is us trying to develop enterprises. But what feeds into developing enterprises, which is our main mandate, what feeds into that is our own institutional learning and growth, which is critical which I have responsibility for and which we will ensure, we want to ensure that the same, uh, same opportunities that exist, for example, like a Silicon Valley entrepreneur will exist for, um, for Caymanian entrepreneurs as well. And that includes strengthening the, the ecosystem, ensuring that there's an enabling environment for, 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 for small businesses. Small businesses currently face the same conditions that a, a big business, a corporation faces, the same fees, that kind of thing. We are very aware of that. So we are trying to ensure that the environment that currently exists becomes more enabling for small business. We will be doing this through a network of support. Um, there is no way that we can do it by ourselves. So we will start with um, other business support organizations. So CISBA, for example, we will work closely with. So if, I'm, I'm sure that there are many CISBA members here. The Chamber, um, is, this, is a, this is a dual effort between ourselves and Chamber. We'll be working very closely with, with, with the Chamber and other membership associations. We want to work very closely with you so that we can hear what your issues are so we can understand them. So as the agency of government, we will be able to better represent your needs to advocate for them and to ensure that those are addressed um, through these organizations. As I just mentioned earlier, the university internship program, which is critical to or creating the link between education and entrepreneurship to ensure that businesses get the kind of um, the kind of service that they need, the, kind, the kinds of talents that they need. We're, we're trying to be that big bridge between the university and the real world. We're also going to be working closer with special advisors. So legal persons, persons with an accounting background, so persons with an auditing background, persons who can provide assistance that I just spoke to, the gaps I just identified with small businesses, persons who can fill those, gap, those gaps will work directly for us through a volunteer, what, what we're calling a professional volunteer core of persons. And I've had many, many so far, many offers, especially in the COVID, this current COVID environment, many persons have come forward to offer their expertise to help the businesses free of cost. Then there is a professional consortium on hire um, as needed. Um, the, the, one of, this will manifest in terms of a technical assistance program that you, you may have heard the minister speak of. These persons will be paid from, by the government to, uh, on an as-needed basis. And in, in this case, it will particularly benefit the loan program. And I'll speak to that a little later on. We're also going to be looking for and um, asking for mentors. And these are going to be persons who have a lot of entrepreneurship experience now. So they may be retired entrepreneurs or they're currently very successful entrepreneurs who can give guidance and assistance to the, the small business centers. And we also plan to open an e-club in schools, um, a group, a set of clubs, the entre entrepreneurship clubs we're calling them, in schools so that we can 
create an, an engender a culture of entrepreneurship throughout the Cayman Islands. All right, so what will we, how will we know that we are successful? And the, I'm, I'm going to focus on the outcome side, particularly because um, we have to be able to prove. You heard me speak earlier of proving our, uh, the value of entrepreneurs or, or small businesses to the, to the economy. I, I, we have that mandate of proving that. So we'll be looking at the number of jobs that I created as a result of the center in terms of all working with, with small businesses. We're looking at how many new businesses start, are started, how much capital is, is accessed by small businesses. We want to understand the change that happens in terms of your sales and revenue and a number of contracts that you, that you are, are getting. And you might beginning to see red flags you now in terms of, hey, that's my, that's my information. Well, we, we will ensure that anything that is um, accessed in terms of information is published as a, published as a, a, a comprehensive Look, not not on any, uh, anything in particular to any part any business your business in particular it, it's a it's a composite look to look at the change in the economy as a result of small businesses and when that change can be proven then much more resources can be pulled and and and, and, and directed to small businesses all right so this is where you are really really interested now i was just that was just preamble for most persons right so this is what most persons are here to hear about, the, the, the MSME relief measures. But I'm going to start with what the program is not, because there are so many persons who um, may have particular expectations. First of all, the program is not a stimulus package. So there are no, there, it is not intended to, to, to incentivize the, the, the sector. There is no, there is no, we have no expectations of boosting spending as a result. Right? It really is, as it is said, a relief measure, a relief package of, package of assistance currently, short-term assistance to ensure that we can, or to help to keep industry. We are, we are very aware that in most instances, there is very little business happening now. So it's really just to ensure that you are able to keep afloat. It really is not intended to, to stimulate industry currently. It, it, it is not a one-time response, meaning... <laughs> The government has said that this is our initial response. It is not, it means that we expect thereafter that the government is going to come with other measures. And very importantly, it is not the government's comprehensive response. So I'm, I'm sure that there are many people here who have questions about work permits, health insurance, pensions, all of those things <laughs> will not be answered with this program. And I won't be able to provide answers currently today with, for those questions. The government has other departments that are working and will be unveiling what other, those other measures are. Through the work department, through, through the Ministry of Tourism, other departments will announce what other measures are. And I'm pretty sure that some, some of these have been announced already. But this package is not intended to address those issues. So let's get into what they are now. The package has four elements. Um, one, there is a low interest loan program. Two, there's a technical assistance program. Three, there's a micro and small business grant program. And four, it's a training, there's a training and hand-holding program. And I'm going to go into them individually now. So I'm going to, let me just give a summary of the loan program. It is a $5 million, initially it's a $5 million, $5 million Cayman Islands dollar facility, and it is going to come through the development bank. It's a 1%, there is a 1% interest rate in the first year and subject to increase to a maximum of 4% thereafter. We expect, however, that through the technical assistance program, once the loans are being serviced, and we, we, we expect that this the technical assistance program will, will help to ensure that that happens, that can keep the interest rate um, where we want to see it, 1%, yeah? 2%. I, I am not saying, I'm not, don't want anybody to hold me to these figures, but we are, we are saying that once we have the technical assistance program in place, it will work to ensure that interest rates remain where we want to see them. The loan is government backed. For, for micro businesses, it's, there is a maximum offer of $20,000. And for small businesses, the maximum is $50,000. There's a six month moratorium on the principal and interest payments. The loans are repayable over four, five years. 
and it allows for 80% financing. That means it won't, you, it will not cover the, the entire, the cost of the entire project. 80% of the cost is what, what is being financed. Therefore, you will need to find security for um, the other element, parts of it. Um, security, however, um, are what we're calling non-traditional. So yes, if you have the, the regular house, car, those will be accepted. But we also understand that that might not always be um, available. So we're having other, other forms of security like registered debenture with the company's assets, supported by liens and a collateral bill of sale, assignment of good quality receivables, that is to be, to be determined on a case-by-case -case basis, inclusive of contracts. We are also accepting, this, this development bank is also accepting guarantor um, with a tangible net worth of 125% of the loan amount in the event they are called upon to repay the debt. There is assignment of shares, deposits, or universal life policy, insurance policies. That will also be accepted. Now, moving on to the grant program. The grant really is $9 million and it comes directly through, um, through our center. So this does not include the development bank. The grants are intended to benefit businesses that one, have a domestic market, and two, they have a demonstrated ability to, to pivot to a, dem dem a domestic market. So it's those who already have a, larger domestic market and those who may initially have had a smaller domestic market but can easily pivot to uh, a domestic market sorry from a from a global market to a domestic market and i'll give you an example so i spoke with somebody recently who has a, a cafe cafe that largely served the tourist market that's easy to pivot to a domestic market or easier than, for example, maybe a water sports business. But depending on the business in particular, maybe they could. And we would have to look at each on a case-by-case -case basis because there are some tourist businesses that can, that can demonstrate a pivot can happen um, as against those who may not be able to demonstrate that. The grant is $1,000 per month for three months, and it's payments to third parties. 3,000 businesses are to be assisted on this program, and it really is working capital assistance. Now we're moving on to the third, third program, and that's a technical assistance program. So we, for this program, we're intending to use firms or individuals who are members of SEPA, and they'll provide financial management or strategic assistance with micro and small businesses. So they'll be writing business plans, preparing financial statements, doing coaching. This assistance will happen over 12 months and each business is being assigned 20 hours. So once you, are, you have been accepted into the loan program, you automatically are given 20 hours of free technical assistance, free to you, the government will pay the firms or individuals who are, you know, are, are selected to be a part of the program to provide you with this assistance. There are quality control mechanisms in place to ensure that the expected standards are met. So persons won't just give you, charge us for you, the time and not give you quality service. We are ensuring that there are quality control mechanisms in place. However, this assistance can only be accessed through the loan program. It doesn't mean that you can't get coaching or you can't get technical assistance because our center is there for that. If, you, if you're not interested in a loan, for example, but you want to have technical assistance, it won't be able to get you through this program, but you can also access, it, access assistance, business monitoring or business assistance through our center. Now, the training, I know that some persons have issues with hearing that there is mandatory training, but I want, to, want us to be clear there is only one session of the training that is mandatory, and that is a program orientation. So persons can understand the, the entire loan program once you, um, you access the, the program, what, um, what, what obtains, what are your obligations, what are all obligations at the center, what are CIDB's obligations. That is the one session that is mandatory. 
other training sessions will be based on the gaps identified in your coaching sessions. So when you meet with the technical assistants, they will determine what your gaps are and they will recommend the other trainings. It doesn't mean that you can't, it doesn't, it doesn't hold up the process. No, it doesn't. Because training, for example, orientation will happen before while, while, while we do, due diligence is, is happening. The other trainings will happen while the loans are being disbursed. It will not cause any delay in the process. It's not designed to cause a delay in the process of getting the loans out. All right, so I'm pretty sure that you would have been able to see from, from all that I've said that there is some amount of interconnectivity with the program. So the training, the loan program, all, all of them, they are connected. The technical assistance will lead you to the loan, will lead into the loan program. The, the training is also connected because the training is intended to help you where, the, where the, the gaps are identified through the technical assistance program. Technical assistance program identifies the gaps. You get that training. The technical assistance program is what is necessary before the loans can be reviewed by the CIDB. Now, how do I apply? For, loan, for loans, you are asked to send your applications to loan.cicbd at gov.ky and those applications will open next week. Grants. Applications are already open, grant.cicbd.gov.ky. For training sessions, if you want to be asked, no, no, these training sessions are not necessarily those assigned, aligned to the, to the loan program, but if you just want to be trained on any one of these subjects, and we are, there are quite a number, we're going to be putting out in a few, by tomorrow, I think, no, by Monday, a list of trainings that will be available over the next month. And if you want to apply for any of those, you send this to this address, CICBD at gov.ky. General inquiries are also being asked, you're asked to be sent, to send them here as well, CICBD at gov.ky. All right, just to give an understanding of the process flow for the loans and grants. So for the loan, you, the applications are made through us, our center. I'm calling it the center because it's very confusing to have these, two, these letters looking the same, right? CICBD and CIDB. The, the applications are made with our center, and we are also, right after application, we're moving you into the technical assistance program I spoke of a while ago. While the technical assistance program is happening, we are also, the CIDB will also be reviewing your loans and carrying out due diligence. Eh? So they'll be looking at your, your, probably your supply chains, your credit history, that kind of thing while technical assistance happening. So there is no delay because these are con concurrent activities. Once the CIDB is done with loan review, then there'll be loan disbursement. They're also in charge of that. The loan monitoring and business monitoring will be carried out by us. Loan monitoring by the technical assistance and business monitoring by the advisors who are assigned to the businesses. These are persons within our center now to ensure that your business is performing as against, as as up to the performance standards that you would have created. The grant process is really just CIS, us, us alone. There is no other agency um, involved in it. So you make an application. Um, we do a, just a very short due diligence, um, not, nothing intense. Um, disbursement happens and then we monitor on request of government just to be able to say what has happened, no intense monitoring, just be able to say what has happened be up to about six months after the, the, the disbursement of the loan. That's it basically. So it, I'm opening the floor now to um, questions. I'm not sure, but well, I'm sure you would have questions. My, my team is waiting to assist me. I am not certain. I think I've lost, I don't know. Trying to find. Yes, hello. Uh -huh. um, go ahead, yes, go ahead. Yeah, I'm just unmuted, just unmuted here. Um, um, I'm Anna Sambula. I'm, I'm very glad to hear all of this stuff. But um, maybe I missed it, but the hand-holding thing is mostly what I'm interested in. And I didn't, I don't know if you could expound a little bit on that. Um, all right, so 
if you're not interested in the loan program, then we will provide you handholding through the center. You'll be, you will you come in and make an application. Well, you just come speak with one of us and we will assign you a business advisor and we will work with you for handholding throughout. Um, our, our center is what we call it, so it's relation, business development is relationship based. So normally we, you are assigned an advisor who helps you throughout at least a two year period. Eh? Work yes. with you to help you to grow your business. That is um, what we exist to do and it's easy for you to be assigned a business advisor. Right. If you send us an email, because we um, nobody can come in now, right? send us an email mm -hmm. indicating that, and we we'll respond to you. Yeah. Thank you. I I just um I just need to have a little coaching to see if it's even feasible for me to, because I'm one of those financial illiterate people that you talked about. Mm -hmm. I my business sort of happened to me because of necessity with elderly and. Yeah. Um, and so I just kind of need to know if doing a loan, well, definitely the grant would help, but if a loan at this time would be a feasible thing to do, um, because okay. that, yeah. Right. You need that kind of assessment, fine. So yeah. um, if you send us an email, okay. we will get back to you. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. I do have a question if that's okay. Yes, go ahead. Um, I, of the four kind of, there's two, there's a loan interest program, the technical assistance and the grant and the training. Of all four of those, are all four only available for 100% owned Caymanian companies? No, not, not at all. The, um, the, oh, let me, I want to be very clear on this. The only program that's, that's um, well, technical assistance at, by virtue of the fact that it's connected to the loan program. The loan program is for 100% businesses on Cayman and business simply because it's coming through the CIDB and the CIDB has a, a, a law that allows it only to work with 100% Cayman and business. There was no intention to, to um, co confine it to 100% on, to Cayman and business, but because of the fact that CIDB itself has a law, that, that confines it to working with 100% with Cayman and businesses. But the grant program is for anybody, any businesses uh, with, with um, Cayman and um, percentage ownership. Yes. As long as there's Cayman and ownership within the business, it, 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 it qualifies for the grant program. Yeah, and a quick, a, kind of a live example on that, if I can just, with the um, Development Bank, I don't know, you said it's in their law, but I don't know if they have any um, element at all that they can t do on a case by case basis. For example, one of my clients is a small cafe right. and a married couple, both married. Um, one of them is Caymanian and one of them was not born in Cayman but has been here for many years and they're married and it's a true man at marriage and they hold a 60 40 split. Um, because they both own and run the business, um, is is the law with the development bank absolutely? It's not a hundred percent Caymanian owned, therefore no. Or would they look on a case by case basis at examples like this where it's clearly just a union where one of them wasn't born in Cayman, rather than some of the sixty forty splits you might get where <clears throat> it's just a Caymanian owning sixty percent for more paper reasons. It's, it's, it, the law um, allows it to work only with 100% Caymanian businesses. So I, I doubt that a case-by-case by case issue would, would apply in this instance. It, it's, it's, it, there's a law, Development Bank law, which clearly states that it only works with 100% Caymanian businesses. Okay, thank you. And can you quickly go through the difference between a micro and small business? A micro business uh, uh, is a business that has four employees, not including the owner, and um, has a turnover of, of $250,000 annually. Whereas a small business has ownership, has 12 employees, including the owner, and or less, and has a turnover of $750,000 Caymanian dollars annually. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Althea, I have a question. Let's go ahead. Uh, this is Troy Leacock uh, from Crazy Crab. Um, could you just uh, just take us through a little bit 
about the loan security, uh, the 80 percent. Um, my understanding then, if if there was a loan of fifty thousand that was being applied for, uh, the company would then have to provide uh, security for ten thousand um, dollars. So, um, is is that what we're saying? I'm going to ask Marlon to take that. Marlon from my team. Hello. Um, thank you for your question. Um, if, could you use real numbers? Give me about the numbers that you had used in your example, please. Yeah, so uh, applying for the maximum $50,000 loan, um, okay. then you, I'm just trying to understand then, the government would guarantee the 80%, the 20% then would need to be secured with debentures or collateral or whatever uh, from the company or guarantor. So in that case, then, you know, 20% would be $10,000. So is the amount of the collateral then that needs to be offered up by the company effectively $10,000 then? No, for example, for, for the maximum loan of $50,000, the, the applicant would need to secure the 40000 which is the 80% that is required for them um, for, for the actual loan proceedings. So the applicant... Uh, it needs to provide security for eighty percent. So the government right. is the government is securing the twenty percent. Then the the loan the loan facility is fully is a fully government backed uh, facility. However, okay. um, we're as Althea pointed out, we're trying to prove the economic viability of small businesses. So um, we're encouraging companies to finance a loan at, the, at their best ability. Okay, so but it, but, it, but it is fully guaranteed by the, the government. Okay, so I mean, this is this is really important, obviously, for the people that are looking at the loan. So, um, so I'm applying for the maximum fifty thousand dollar loan. Um, you know, everything looks good. Uh, so, I would need to provide security in the amount of forty thousand dollars. Then, right, that's correct. and that's that security can be assigning receivables. It can be a guarantor who would be uh, guarantee the forty thousand. Um, presumably, company assets. I mean, in our case, we have boats. Um, so right. that that is that's there would be effectively a debenture or some a charge or something against some company asset. Right, and, and just the amount just, of forty thousand. So, well, for the guarantor, the net worth has to be one hundred and twenty-five percent of the loan amount which I believe would take it back to the 50,000 as it relates to good quality receivables. Um, it is not very specific. However, that is purposely done because it, it, it's on a case by case basis where you would have to assess the nature of the business, the nature of the credit terms, mm -hmm. who the actual debtors are. Um, but overall, the age of the receivables will be a significant factor in assessing the AR component. Okay. But basically this is not just a, straight up loan to 100% Cayman, you know, company that is in effect, uh, you know, maybe underwater or has no, has no, you know, positive balance sheet or whatever, then this, this really is a loan that needs to be secured, even though it's government guaranteed, the company or the loan applicant really needs to offer security in some shape or form for quite a substantial right. amount of the loan that's being applied for. Well, substantial is, is relative. Um, but well, yes, 80 percent is is quite substantial. So I mean, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I mean, obviously, it's not like a typical loan where you know you want to borrow fifty thousand dollars and you need to offer up eighty thousand dollars or whatever of collateral. But right, but nonetheless, right. it's 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 eighty percent of you know. So it's so it's it's not just a here's a fifty thousand dollar loan. Um, here you go, and government fully guaranteed, and you don't need any collateral. There really is a process of offering security for the loan. Then, so. right? Okay, right. Um, but we also want to add that uh, it is a soft loan. Um, Althea would have mentioned that the first year is subject to one percent interest rate, and there is also a six-month payment moratorium, which is applied to the principal and also the interest. So there are other aspects of it that. Um, you know, speaks to the relief measures um, mm -hmm. that the loan provides. Okay. Well, just a, a follow-up question, because I think that, um, I mean, this is really important for me. You know, I, I have several different businesses. Um, 
So I understand the grant is very much linked to a business being able to pivot to the local market. Um, the loan, however, presumably doesn't have that same um, requirement. So for example, you know, my water sports business, whilst there's an ability to pivot to some degree and we'll be applying for the grant, you know, we will absolutely need to hibernate for a period of time <laughs> awaiting the, the reopening or the, you know, the, um, the visitor market. So presumably, um, assuming that the assets are there to secure the loan, et cetera, and there is a business plan for what I call hibernation, um, that the loan could be applied to keeping the infrastructure in place, whether it's employees or whatever, and hibernating for six months. There's not a requirement to show this ability to pivot to qualify for the loan. Um, am I correct in that assumption? Um, that is being discussed because when the, when the issue of domestic market was brought to the table, that was really just for grants. Um, and no, as it relates to loans, it's, it's being discussed. I, as you said, um, I'm pretty sure that the fact that you're able to to fully secure the loan will come into the picture. So that might be on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, an assessment of the business and its ability to secure the loan, its ability to, um, to bounce back beyond um, the period of you know, risk um, uncertainty right now. I'm, I'm pretty certain that would be an um, individual assessment. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, you, so, you're, yeah, so you're looking for the ability for the business to not just simply use the loan to kind of survive for another six months and then die, but actually to be able to survive for another six months and then rebound. At, Absolutely. Because I mean, presumably, we're going we're gonna to invite visitors back to the island at some point, <laughs> whether it's three months, six months, nine months, 12 months, there is going to come a point. Okay, so because that, that's really important. You know, there's only so much pivoting you can do when you've got four boats that you normally do 90% or 95% of your business to the visitor market. But there's no, there's no way that I can afford to, um, to, you know, to either pivot 100% or to not keep my business going because, you know, I've got employees and I've got assets that I need to keep on standby for that rebound. So that's encouraging because I was very concerned that there was going to be just a completely unrealistic expectation of hundreds of, you know, uh, visitor businesses having to pivot, which is just impractical and impossible. So good. Okay. Are there any questions, any other questions? I'm not able to see the chat questions, um, questions in the chat. I'm not certain if my team is seeing any, any questions that I can see that they would like to have addressed or could address themselves. I'm not able to see the chat just now. Yes, and I have a question. So my question is, um, given the nature of smaller micro businesses, the, the fact that they're, they're in, the, it, in the fragile state that they are, um, simply because of, of what's happening now, but also these businesses tend not to run very formalized sets of accounts. The very nature of the economic setup here in Cayman, and they don't have to do that. So, you know, it's literally very small businesses with two or three and, and a box of receipts literally under the bed. Uh, how are these individuals going to come to you? Oh, Two seconds, really, babe. Yeah, really, I went sprinkle. Could you seconds. please mute your mics, please, please? And, and hello. There. So, you, you know, these individuals running these companies are not massive. Outside is hot. Forward. My daughter telling me that. Um, you know, sets of accounts for you to scrutinize. They, they're just not in that position. How, how, how will they cope with. I thought her like about five years ago on a swimming pool. <sighs> Would you mute your mics, please? Man, I you have no, but no. I don't know how bad I would like to go. Thank you. Yes, go ahead. Um, all right, I think I heard your question though. But for, but let me for the for the grants. If you notice, for the grants, we're asking for bookkeeping records and not for financial statements. So as you spoke of, they have their receipts in a box. That's fine. As long as you are able to, to prove to us with those receipts in a box that yeah, we, we, we can see your supplier relationships, we can see your customer relationships. That is that, that we, those bookkeeping records are, are good enough eh? for, the, for the grants. For the loans, then you will take those bookkeeping records to the financial, um, for the technical assistance, persons on te technical assistance program, and they would use those to create your financial statements. 
Have I answered your question? Hello? Sorry, I was muted. So they, so your departments will help these small businesses? Put Absolutely, right. So for, for the loans, they don't need to have financial statements as long as we are able to see those, those, those um, bookkeeping records. So yes, as I said, the, the, the receipts in a box work well with us because they indicate that we can use those to indicate um, your supplier relationships, your, your customer relationships. That, that's fine. And, we, and for the loan program, um, that can be given to, taken to the technical assistant who will help you to create the statements from, from using those. So there's almost a sort of pre, a, a pre process that they have to go through to get this box of receipts put into a set of, you know, P&L and, and cash flow, et cetera, so that, so that then that can be taken forward for you to assess for, for the loans, you know, it's not, so it's not beyond, uh, it's not beyond the possibility that everybody could be could be helped, even even those guys just with a box of receipts and, and, and absolutely yes yes. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Follow up on that question, if I can. If if a, if they do not have a box of receipts, they haven't kept any records, but they obviously, if they're using a business bank account and they have the transaction history from the bank account. Are you going to be able to use that as well, or are you going to? Do you have to see physical receipts? Well, we, what what we have as the required documents is um, a business. We need to see three months um, business state, business bank statements, um, and uh, at least a year, not necessarily for every month consecutively, but we want to see those 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 kinds of transactions happening. For example, supplier relationships. Uh, one of, in discussing this yesterday, a team member said, um, brought out the fact that, for example, a barber would not have, would not be able to, would, does not provide receipts to his customers. But the barber has supplier relationships. He should be able to prove that he bought um, whatever cream he uses, that kind of thing, from the supplier. So that kind of evidence of those relationships are critical to being able to access it. Even if you don't keep um, them in a in a in a log or something, but we, we need some evidence. Did I answer your question? Uh, yes, thank you. That's great. Thanks. You're welcome. Are there any other questions? Yeah, yeah for a company, I, I understand the requirements of of, of the small and and. and and micro businesses from a loan and grant perspective. If say a company has 18 employees, 13 of whom are Caymanian, uh, are, is this loan and grant program closed to that company? The grant program would be closed to the, the company um, because they have um, more than 12 employees. They, they, the law does not say that the employees have, how many are, have to be Caymanian or not. The, the law that dictates um, the size of who is determined to be um, a small business clearly states that you should have 12 or less employees, up to 12 employees, um, and 750. So it doesn't say or either. So um, it would, it would um, prevent you from accessing the loan, the grant, but I'm pretty sure you'd be able to access the grant, the, the, the loans, I'm sorry. So you wouldn't be able to access the grant, but you would be able to access the loan. Grants are for small and micro businesses. Okay, but the loan. So just to be very clear, so it's going to be less. You've got to be twelve or less, and seven hundred fifty thousand and less. Right, right, right. So it has to be both. Right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm hmm. Can you explain some more as to what is MSME stimulus packages, please? Well, what I did say first, very early on, is that it's not a stimulus package. That's the very first thing you need to understand. It's not a stimulus package. It's not intended to incentivize the sector. It really are yeah, just simple relief measures. Mm -hmm. And it is intended to, put, um, to ensure that businesses can, to help them to stay afloat, just as simple as that, just keep their doors open for the time being. It is not a one-time offer, so the government has said that it's an initial move and will assess thereafter 
to and and, and implement other measures going forward. As well, it is a it is not a comprehensive package, so it doesn't address things like your work permit issues. It doesn't address pension or health con health health insurance concerns. It really is just giving some funds into the system to ensure to help businesses to take care of some responsibilities to pay your rent for example to um to pay employees or uh, one or two employees that kind of thing it's not thank a you. stimulus package thank you is there any aid it can new businesses that that um are otherwise eligible but they don't have necessarily a track record with suppliers because they're fairly new, say six months old, would they be able to apply? No, the businesses would have to be in existence for over 12 months. That's one of the, one of the criteria for, access, uh, um, for selection. Okay. Do you, you have, have a list of all of the criteria somewhere that can be distributed? Um, yeah, we could, do, if you, we could send that out to um, the persons. I will, I will send that through to the chamber and have them distributed. That would be fantastic. Okay. How long would it take for a small business or micro to receive, uh, to receive a loan amount, um, you know, from, from starting point A to, to receive? Um, I don't want to be impractical. Um, and because things are not happening as, at the pace at which they normally happen again, on paper, the loans are supposed to take four weeks. But you know we are constrained now by um, what's happening around us currently. It will likely take longer than four weeks. The grant processing is when we start, when we actually get out of the ground, it's supposed to happen in two weeks. Um, I'm not going to say that because we have not really... We have been accepting applications, but we haven't started processing, processing applications yet. So it will take more than two weeks. And we are constrained by our current situation. For, for example, persons can't come to us and give us the documents. Persons have to be scanning them, and we have to be working with them online and that kind of thing. So it's taken, taken a little longer than, than it really should. But we had intended for it to take two weeks for the grants and four weeks for the loans. Thank you for that. Hello, yes, I have a question. Yes, go ahead. Hello? Yes, go ahead. Um, does the government know how many micro and small business, how many micro and small businesses are there? The government, there's a record of how many businesses there are. There is not yet a, 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 a count, an account of how many are micro and how many are small. That is just happening now. Um, okay, so we are, yeah. yes, go ahead. No, it's just in these times of emergency, going through all this paperwork is very hard for a smaller micro business, needless to say, especially during these times. And if we had some indication of how many there were with a certain amount of funds, perhaps those funds could just be spread out evenly and assisting established, you know, certain lesser criteria but than what you put forth here. That's exactly what we're doing. We're assisting 3,000 businesses with a set amount of monies, but the businesses have to prove that they have been in existence and that they are really a business. Otherwise, we'll be giving away monies to persons without even being sure that they're a business. So we just need to establish that you are a business that you've been operating. It is $3,000 being given across um, flatly, $1,000 per month to each business of 3,000 that we, we, we expect to apply. Right. Well, but you have our trade and business licenses, so you know who we are. You know how many years we've been in business. So I don't understand why we're having to go through all this in this time of emergency. That's just my, my personal opinion. And I understand, but there are many persons who have a trade and business license who have not been operating. We have established that. And so we have to make those distinctions. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Hi, I have a question. Yes, go ahead. Um, so you indicated that for the loan program, um, companies will need to provide um, maybe a more proper set of financial statements versus the grant program where 
a box of receipts is acceptable. Right. Um, so because of that, um, and again, you have to go through the technical assistance program, our company's capped at the 20 hours per entity. Um, I can just see a lot of situations where if companies haven't formal records, trying to put together a set of formal financial statements in 20 hours could be quite difficult in a lot of cases. It is capped for the time being. Maybe it's something that we can we can renegotiate. But for the time being, it is capped at twenty hours. Um, we don't expect that most persons coming in will will come in with a shoebox of of, of receipts. Um, usually, persons who are applying for the loans are more small than micro, and they would have some evidence of records, based on our experience. Um, but we know that there will be some who don't have, and um, so we th there is room for renegotiation. Yes. Okay, thank you. Have we covered all of the questions? I see that there are a number of um, questions being through, put through the chat and I'm, I'm not being able, I'm, I'm just seeing the number but I can't see the chat itself. So I'm, I'm assuming that my team is handling, the, uh, handling those questions. For those that are not being handled, um, we have a commitment with the chamber to send a response to all of these questions. So if you don't get a response by chat currently, we will send you a response through the chamber by sometime next week early. Because I'm going to there quite a number. Let's go ahead. Hi. Good morning. Yes, good morning. Um, I really don't have so much of a question at the moment, but what I uh, would like for you to all do is that uh, make the process as simple as possible by seeing what as much that can be done before the person actually come in to, to you so that it can really limit the time, so to speak, that it will take to turn over something. Because sometimes I might come in to you and I, I need this, I need that, I need the other, and then it, the, the process is well drawn out. But if persons are, you know, geared to us, you, you need this, you need that, you need the other. So when, you, when they come in, the process could be done much faster and more efficient. I agree. I agree. Um, one of the things that we say, we, we make clear is that the process does not begin. We don't, we don't think we don't um, assess the process as having be, um, begun, except we have all of the documents in place. So if you submit one document, we're asking for four then you, the process will not begin until you have submitted everything. Okay. Right? So cur currently, persons are submit. We are submitting through emails, and that's fine. But do not. We are asking you to to understand that if you have not sub submitted everything, the process has not begun. So you can't start checking your two weeks until you have submitted everything. And even for this first week, we are saying um, it may take a little longer than two weeks because we're just beginning. But don't don't expect that. Um, don't start checking time. From the moment you submit your first piece of doc of that required document, it has to be the entire package that, that is submitted before we, we say the process has started. Well, um, you just mentioned email, but um, I, I would think that you have um, plans in making things more automated where if you need X, Y, and Z, and just like when you're filling out some forms on the internet, if you do not have this, this process gives you a red line, says this is needed, and the process cannot go further. Well, we currently don't have that in place, but we, what we have are personnel. So once a, your file comes in, it's transferred to one of the members of a team. They will contact you to indicate that this is missing and therefore not, um, not yet in line for, for approval. Okay, clearly understood. I am interested in the, um, I'm interested and um, I'm going to start the process and see where it can lead you to from there. Okay, sir. All right, thank you. Good morning. morning. Some of the chats that I see here. This is Will from the Chamber. So I see into the chat, uh, there's somebody asked, asked uh, um, Althea about the, whether CI, uh, whether your organization is working with the Small Business Association, the Chamber, for these programs? So we are, the program was, we are, we are handling the program on the government's behalf. We are working, as you see now, we are collaborating with the Chamber to, to bring you this, um, this, this particular webinar. Oh, going forward, we'll be working with the, with the with CISPR and Chamber on 
this project and other projects as well, but this one in particular, we are working in, in collaboration with the development bank to get the loans through. But we will be having a session with the chain with this with CISBA pretty soon to discuss all that relates to them and how we can work together. Fantastic. Um, and the other one in, in keeping with the same thing is you're saying that to speed up the processing of the loans, why not invite the retail banks to assist the CIDB with the process on the same terms as the C CIDB would be operating on? Chances that, are these businesses already have accounts with the retail banks. That is a decision that has to be made by the development bank though, but that is something that um, we, I'm pretty sure will be discussed when, when, when we get to that. We have, we're having a meeting later on to discuss the terms of the loan. So um, I could bring that um, forth in, in, in that discussion this, this afternoon. Uh, uh, morning, a question. Go ahead. In terms of a, a service industry where um, labor is supplied only, client provide materials, um, how would you treat um, um, receipt or um, to satisfy um, the bank requirements? Mm -hmm. I'm not quite sure I understand your question. Go ahead, go again. In terms of our labor in, in, go in terms of In terms of a service industry. Service where, industry, yeah. Where labor is only supplied. So the client normally provides material, labor has been provided, the uh -huh. revenue would obtain through labor only. Right. In terms of that, so from an expenses point of view, it would be like administrative expenses, if, um, salaries and overheads, etc. But wouldn't it? But wouldn't you still need to purchase supplies for the business? Even if it's a service, you would still need to, to, to purchase supplies, inputs. So, so the business must have inputs. Well, supplies it would be just like mainly administrative business um, supplies, like um, um, papers and That's such. Fine, things. as long as you have a trail indicating that where, where that, that that supply uh, a regular supply system. That's fine. Even if it's, if, and if it's paper, if it's pens, it, it, it doesn't matter. As long as we can see the, those. And those are, that's what goes into your, into your, and if you can provide us with your payroll information as well, that's fine. Right, because the bigger bulk would be like payroll in terms of. That's fine as well, yes. Okay, thanks. That's evidence. Are question. we done? Uh, okay. one, one last question, Althea. Um, yeah. Is is there any discussion about um, government guaranteeing? So basically, the loan type of scheme that it's doing with the uh, development bank. Is there any discussion about government doing that with commercial banks in order to be able to allow some sort of um, loan facility to the companies that are uh, not a hundred percent Caymanian owned? Is there any discussion about that, or is that completely off the table? I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be able to say if it's completely off the table. I know that there this, there have been discussions around it um, as to how far advanced those discussions are. I am unable to say. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank but you. But I don't think it's completely off the table. Okay. I have a question. Go ahead. Um, how do we go about actually accessing the loan? Getting started with the application, I should ask. You send an application, you send an email to loan.cicbd at gov.ky. Uh -huh. It will be given a response that will give you outline all of what you need to bring you need to send and, and where you need to send it to. Send an application, send an email to that, to, that, to that address, and then we will respond to you, telling you what all that you need in terms of the, the required documents and stuff. Good afternoon, Althea. Good afternoon, Donovan. Um, I have a very quick question regarding the grants. Um, I understand that the grants would be paid directly to suppliers, is that correct? That third party supplier, yes. Mm -hmm. Um, in the case in most of, instances, I'm sorry, in, in most instances, yes. In most instances, yes. okay. So in the case of, of my small business, um, we have been able to thankfully um, reduce the majority 
basically bring the majority of our expenses, our ongoing expenses down to zero for a couple of months. Uh -huh. The one expense, of course, that we can't bring down to zero is, um, or that I'd pr we prefer not to bring down to zero uh, right away is our, our salaries. Uh -huh. um, is, is the grant, is, are we able to apply that grant if we were to receive it um, to partially covering the expenses of our employees? Absolutely. Well, no, to, to pay, to, as, to pay, salaries. pay salaries. Yes, absolutely. Yes. yes. All right. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, so, and this is more of a macro question and it's about this 100% um, Kamanian ownership. I don't know the figures, and if anybody does know the figures, I'd be interested to know. Let's assume that there are a thousand companies that fall into micro and, and small in, in Cayman across the islands. And let's say 50% of those are owned 100% by Caymanians, and the other 50%, uh, the 60 40 split. Now, let's say that out of those 60 40 splits, that those 50% those companies are employ more Kamanians than 100% Kamanian owned companies. Now, surely it makes sense to look not just at who owns the company, but also how many Kamanians are being employed by those companies. You know, I'm just thinking somebody like Red Cell Sports, for example. You know, there's no way that, that you know, they're employing huge numbers of foreign work permit holders. I agree with you, absolutely. But I wanted to keep in mind that this program was not designed to benefit um, companies that are 100% Caymanian owned alone, um, um, alone. It really was just because of the channel that is being used, and that channel is the Cayman Islands Development Bank. So there is no deliberate effort to, 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 to target only 100% Caymanian business. It is the channel that is being used that has allowed it to, to look like this. Now, I just, somebody just asked about the possibility of, of the government providing the same backing to com other commercial banks. And, I'm, and I said that is on the table. That's, that, that is something that is being discussed. So that would make it clear that the government is not necessarily targeting only businesses that are 100% Cayman. Because your point is, is, is valid. Because there are businesses that are not 100% Cayman who may be employing more Cayman than others. So that's why that makes it clear to us, um, or should make it clear to you, that we, we're really, on understanding this, we would not have just targeted only per businesses that are 100% came on here. That's just because of the channel that's being used. Your hands are somewhat tied of this already because you, were, you, know, you know, your mission was already set out. But you, you obviously are a person of, of, of influence. I'm just saying, you know, if, if you can take anything to the government whenever you talk to them, that would be something to put on the table. And, and Absolutely. Yeah, I, I, I will make a point of that, yes, definitely. Okay, it appears that we, I don't know if there's a representative from the chamber here who would like to bring the meeting to a close. If there are no other questions, are there any other questions? I'm happy that most of your questions were answered in the presentation. So it has made the question and answer section very, very short. So if it is that you have any other concerns or questions, you can always call us at 244-8009, is, is that the correct number? 244-8009. Or you can send an email directly to cicbd at gov.ky and just entitle it general inquiry. General inquiry. You will get an automatic response, but we will respond to you thereafter as well. Hi, I have a question, please, if I may still ask. Yes, go ahead. Hi, Althea, thank you. Um, my question is for the security for the loans, um, would it be possible or would the CICBD consider um, a loan against a home as security for like the 80% for either of the two loans? Yeah, yes, traditional security is, is accepted as well. The traditional, the home, the car, that kind of thing. That's, 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 that's also being accepted. The thing is though, that would be like, I already have a mortgage. So this would be a second loan against my home, even though there, there would be enough equity in it to cover the 20% required. So would the CICBD be willing to take on a second loan? 
It, first of all, the, the loans are being handled by the development bank. We are just the channel through whom um, it is coming. So it is that, was, that, that decision will be made by the development bank. Okay. But I'm pretty sure if, if your first mortgage is being, is being serviced and it's in good standing, then they will deal with you on an individual basis and determine based on your current accounts, well, mm. accounting, that, um, whether or not they can make that decision to, to go forward with the second market. Okay, thank you. Appreciate You're it. Welcome. Okay, bye. All right, well, I'd like to thank, I'd like to thank you, Althea, and the team from the Cayman Islands Center for Business Development. Um, you probably have more questions because we're really still early in this process. So I, I'd really encourage everybody to look, look to the website that we've created. There are already two other webinars that are already posted um, in terms of to assist uh, micro, small, and medium-sized businesses. So again, we're, we're more than happy to continue to put these webinars on. And what we'd ask you to do is send us emails about topics that you'd like to have addressed and we'll get experts to address those for you. So we, I just got off a call with, um, with Minister Hugh uh, and the Chamber Council. So I know the government will be making I know the announcements about um, various issues coming up affecting businesses. So stay tuned and I know that cabinet is trying to hold a meeting for next week to address some issues including the whole issue of access to pensions. So um, thank you again for tuning in and I hope everyone has a great day and remember stay safe stay home. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you everyone.